So <clears throat> this is the the the, uh, the uh, transparency that I use in a talk that I uh, uh, presented uh, one and a half years ago, just before the launch of the, the telescope in November 2021, with uh, a list of very important questions uh, from my uh, point of view. And several of them actually are very well, uh, they are, in fact, the James Webb is going to be very helpful to uh, answer them, or at least to uh, provide significant hints to try to understand what's going on. And specifically because the James Webb, due to its uh, characteristics and properties and instrumentation, is a perfect tool to get uh, the atmospheric properties of uh, exoplanets. So I'm going to show you a different samples of what we are getting now, uh, things that already have been published. I am only going to discuss one uh, uh, that has not been published yet. The rest, uh, actually, uh, the, the publications uh, are available. So just to give you an overview, since we are a community very diverse and uh, we come from different uh, backgrounds, I'm going to give you this overview of different techniques to try to show you and to, to give the context why it's important to use the James Webb, why, why it is crucial uh, to go farther than we had uh, anything that we had before. And this is a collection of the different methods uh, that are used for the discovery of uh, exoplanets and in some cases also for the characterization because we have we are moving from this initial phase where we have discovered more than 500 different planets to the this uh, new phase that is uh, even more exciting with the characterization to understand the formation the evolution the composition atmosphere that this is, is uh, uh, now the probably the most important step at this stage and then uh, we will understand, uh, well, we are starting to understand uh, climate and habitability in at least a few of these objects. So this is a, a reworking of a very well-known uh, uh, diagram by Perryman. And so now you, uh, this is the technique say, for the discoveries, but I have overplotted also uh, what uh, uh, James Webb is doing now, not uh, using radio velocity, but using uh, spectroscopy, how far it has gone now, uh, reaching about 20 uh, Earth mass uh, uh, masses in, in a particular object. More data is coming. And uh, in the case of uh, photometry uh, with uh, transits, with uh, secondary transits, we have already reached uh, uh, essentially the, the value of uh, Earth. So this, from my point of view, this is amazing that in 20 years, 25 years of uh, discoveries, we have been able with different instrumentations to go so far that uh, we are starting to really understand uh, properties from a general point of view. But to give you an additional background, <clears throat> One, the main technique that we are using and the one that is providing uh, key information for uh, the, this atmosphere is, uh, uh, is the, the transit method. We can get uh, information at different stages as uh, the planet goes around the star. Uh, we can get a transmission spectrum uh, when the planet is blocking a tiny fraction of the light coming from the star. We can get also the emission spectrum from the surface as the star blocks completely the surface of the planet. And since the James Webb has instrumentation that works in the mid infrared, this is a, a very useful because this is where the, the emission of the planet is a, a providing the, the largest amount of energy. And also, we, can, we could use in principle also a, a, the phase curve and eventually several uh, uh, programs are going to provide this information as the planet goes around uh, the face of the planet uh, that uh, we see uh, indirectly of course uh, is different so we get information also from this uh, uh, this uh, change with time and uh, just to give additional information for those of you who are not uh, experts in the field 
uh, this uh, uh, for the primary transits, uh, we have a, just this tiny, it's a, it really is very small uh, variation when the, uh, the planet uh, goes uh, uh, across uh, the disk of the star. And uh, uh, this provides a lot of information about the, the size of the planet, of relation between the, the size of the planets and the star. But as I said, also uh, we can use this information to derive the properties of the atmosphere, because uh, yes, uh, actually it's just a simple, simple arithmetic, although it's not so simple, just adding up or subtracting uh, the data from different moments, uh, just before the, the, the transit or after or, or during the, the transit, then we can extract information from the atmosphere. And also, as, as, I, as, I, as I said before, during the, modul the modulation of this, uh, this uh, data due to the uh, change with the phase of the planet, because the, 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 the properties of the, the site illuminated is not the same as the properties of the site that is not illuminated. One of the things that we are also using, but I am not going to discuss uh, too much, uh, but in some cases yeah, I'm going to do is also what we can get for the, from the very few systems where we can detect directly the planets. This is one example, uh, one example, the case of H8799 that has several planets and we have already detected the, how they move around the, the, the star. Is a uh, relatively young system, and the, the, this, these planets are quite uh, uh, hot. One of the things that we have already um, established, and it was a surprise uh, during the, the discovery years, is the huge diversity of the general properties of the planets in terms of a mass and a radii, radii and orbital period. So uh, it's something that it was not expected. In fact, the first planet that was discovered, it was uh, totally out of the charts. And this is the reason why perhaps was not detected uh, the planets, uh, this type of planets, planets uh, were not uh, detected be before. But uh, uh, as we were able to probe different regimes, we have seen different typologies, different, different types, different classes across the spectrum. And in fact, in the solar system, we can say that we have detected uh, like four different uh, types, but in the when we compare with what we have uh, uh, found uh, in these uh, five thousand uh, confirmations, uh, there are like eight different families. So we can say that the solar system is, in a sense, well, at least doesn't contain all the the samples that we can find. Uh, in other places, fortunately, by the way, for life on, on this planet. And I am going to give you, I am going to give you some examples of uh, the diversity of the uh, properties of the atmospheres that now we are getting with the James Webb. And just before the James Webb, we detected, we believed at that time that we detected uh, several uh, uh, components, uh, both atoms and molecules in different systems. I have to say that uh, uh, from the ground and also with the James Webb, we are biased because this, uh, as I have said several times, the differences uh, uh, due to the presence of an atmosphere are tiny when we get uh, the, when we do the comparison during the transit of the planet. Uh, so we need uh, to have a very good signal to noise, and it's normally not the case. And uh, at the beginning, also the models uh, were not uh, as good as we would like to have them. And from my point of view, although they have improved a lot, still a lot of work is needed. But in any case, we had a collections of uh, detections and tentative detections, 
And now with the James Webb, we can see these characteristics with a detail that is totally in parallel with uh, we had before uh, from the ground or with the uh, HST, for instance. So what is new with the uh, James Webb? Just a, a brief overview. Uh, the James Webb uh, Space Telescope has uh, several themes, and two of them uh, are related, directly related uh, with astrobiology. And uh, to be able to fulfill these uh, objectives, uh, it has several instruments. Uh, but essentially, what the important thing is that it can provide uh, imaging from 0.6 to 28 microns, and also coronagraphic imaging. Um, from my point of view, uh, uh, the, the, well, I think that it is also very important that it has a spectroscopy with different resolutions up to 28, uh, 28 microns because for the characterizations of uh, the atmospheric properties and the general properties, in fact, of exoplanets, uh, NIRI and NIRC-SPEC, uh, two of the, the instruments uh, are very important. And this is the collection of the instruments. I'm not going to go into the details. Uh, this information is in the ESA or NASA web pages. But in any case, the important thing, as I already said, is that uh, uh, all these, these four instruments uh, can provide uh, very important uh, information for the characterization of exoplanets. And I will, in one of the cases that I'm going to show later, uh, uh, actually they have been used for the same uh, target, uh, for the same planet, and uh, we can see how well they complement to each other. But in, in the particular case of a, a follow-up for transits, a, a, each of them has uh, its own capabilities. Uh, this is the summary of uh, the a visual summary of uh, uh, what you can do with uh, each uh, instrument. For the first cycle that is still going on, uh, several programs were both uh, approved as uh, GTO programs. Uh, that's it, the guarantee time for the teams uh, that built uh, the instruments. And also NASA decided to, with approval of uh, the Canadian Space Agency and NISA, of course, decided to uh, uh, have a, what is called the early release uh, science programs. That there are open programs that the, the community requested. And uh, from the very beginning, uh, the, the data was available for everyone. So anyone can have access to the spectro, the, the, the photometry or whatever it is, and analyze and publish. And it has been very competitive, but very su successful too, because uh, uh, having big teams or small teams working at the same time, it has been very uh, fruitful. I think that it has a, a, actually has been more collaborative the effort than uh, has fostered new collaborations uh, 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 than otherwise otherwise would have happened. Anyway, uh, I am not including here the uh, observations in the geo time, the open time, that also is a significant number of them. Just say for cycle, cycle I am talking about for cycle one. So first result. I'm going from, from the most uh, massive objects uh, to the uh, lowest uh, masses, uh, masses. And uh, here is the example of a planetary mass companion. Uh, let's say that this is something very weird because it's an a object that is, has like 12 Jupiter masses and it's a, in a wide orbit around a, a twin brown dwarf. And this object in particular particular is uh, the spectral type is uh, what we call L7, uh, about uh, 1,400 uh, Kelvin. And among other things, it's important because the, 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 the accuracy of the data, the, the signal to noise uh, ratio that we can reach with this uh, kind of objects is much better than we can dream with uh, exoplanets using the transit uh, method. So they can be used as a reference 
and a way to improve the models that are going to be used later with exoplanets. Brown dwarfs or uh, planetary mass objects are interesting per se. I am an expert on them, so I wouldn't say otherwise. But in any case, they are also a stepping stone in order to be able to understand properly the, the characteristics of uh, exoplanets. And this particular case, we see a whole inventory of uh, different uh, molecules from water, carbon monoxide, methane, and silicates. And this particular uh, result is very important because uh, uh, one possible conclusion is there is a, there are a cloud of silicates in this subject, but also, uh, uh, um, not this, not this one. So uh, we have a, a this a, this a, a decks of clouds. So it's a, a an important result. And again, this a direct spectrum. It has not been subtracted from the light coming from the the primary star. In this particular case, a, a, a binary. So a, the accuracy of the the spectrum is a, much better than we can get in a in a brown dwarf. And in fact. If we enlarge, uh, and I, I haven't done it, but if we go to the regional spectrum and we enlarge any particular section, uh, all these things that you can see, that in principle you can think whether it would be a noise, no, 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 these, there are features, spectral features, uh, uh, the richness of information that this is spectra, uh, the things that we're getting with the James Webb contain is, is quite amazing. And in fact, going uh, cooler, uh, we have this uh, ultra cool dwarf. Uh, the spectral type is what we call a uh, Y2. It's a uh, 250 K uh, approximately. And the first time I saw this spectrum, uh, <laughs> because uh, actually I analyzed in this, this one, I thought, oh, I made a mistake. Everything is noise. <laughs> and then five, sec five seconds later, <laughs> When I had a, a more careful look, I said, oh, wow, this is really, really amazing. This is, this is plenty, plenty of different uh, lines uh, coming from uh, different molecules. I'm not going to unveil all the things we are, uh, we are seeing here. We have seen here because uh, we are still uh, uh, preparing the paper. But in any case, we have a uh, water methane and ammonia. Ammonia is a characteristic uh, that is uh, essential. Is 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 uh, the defining uh, molecule for these kind of objects. The Y uh, dwarf. Uh, uh, but this is the first time we have uh, seen uh, in an ambiguous in an ambiguous uh, way. Uh, in other spectra was uh, more, uh, the, the detection was not so well uh, determined. In any case, uh, the, the, the data is so good that with the models, we, we can get a, a PT profile and the, uh, with different models. Uh, and uh, so we can go, we can see the structure of the atmosphere in 3D. And uh, it's something that we can do also with exoplanets, is exoplanet planets, but not with the same kind of uh, um, uh, accuracy, or uh, there are more uncertain, uncertain, uncertainties in any case. So, uh, going down uh, to the uh, realm of uh, exoplanets, this is uh, hot Jupiter. Wasp thirty nine is one of the the is the object that. that Actually, has been attacked. Let's say, with a full uh, array of instruments on board the James Webb, and here you see uh, the results uh, from uh, three instruments in two different setups. In the case of near spec, the mirror data, mirror data will eventually come, and you can see when uh, you compare uh, the same spectral range with different instrumentations that uh, uh, they match uh, quite well with each other. For instance, in the case of a NIRCAP, NIRCAM Lawrence Velocity Spectroscopy with the near spec uh, prism or uh, the high resolution uh, spectra, spectrum, uh, that the shape is essentially the same and uh, the, uh, the errors are in general, quite small, 
and see when we compare this this allows us we compare to, to to be able to do the comparison with the uh, the models and to again uh, get uh, the, the the whole inventory of the molecules and these are the results in this particular case Tech, uh, sodium water uh, um, carbon monoxide uh, 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 and this particular case also probably this is the first uh, real the, the first uh, unambiguous confirmation of a carbon uh, dioxide it was detected before uh, in a more ambiguous, uh, ambiguous uh, way, but in this particular case, uh, it seems that it has been detected uh, beyond any, any doubt. And also, uh, this uh, combined uh, analysis gives us, uh, us um, provides us the possibility of um, having a, a look at the photochemistry of the atmosphere. In this particular case, how, how uh, sulfur uh, dioxide is uh, formed. Um, uh, so we are we are looking at chemistry in the atmosphere of these uh, objects. That is again amazing. Let's uh, remind you that what we see is just a, a tiny point on the sky, and there's the light coming from the star, and we are able not, to the, not only to detect say, a planetary system, a planet around this star, but also uh, to uh, detect the atmosphere and say, the chemistry in, in, uh, on, on, it, on its atmosphere. I think it's quite amazing. Going down in mass, it is a Saturn size uh, planet say, with uh, about uh, 1000 K. And it looks that in this particular case, we are able to see how uh, um, helium uh, is, uh, is uh, running away from the atmosphere of this, uh, this uh, object. Uh, my particular view is a little bit more skeptical, but in any case, uh, uh, it's, uh, it looks like uh, uh, they got uh, these uh, results. And uh, uh, again, you can have, for instance, if you have a comparison of the spectrum here with the models, uh, 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 although some, because we cannot get the same kind of a, a, a signal to noise uh, as in the case of the brown dwarf, so the isolated uh, planetary mass objects. But in any case, models are able to reproduce these observations to a level that was not and it was not achieved before. And uh, so we can detect uh, features and to try to remove ambiguities uh, due to uh, um, uh, uh, different kind of uncertainties. And uh, actually, this reason why we can detect uh, the possibility of this uh, helium tail in this particular object. Again, uh, uh, Going down in mass, we have a um, size also. We go, this is a Neptune size uh, object. And uh, models indicate that this is a significant amount, amount of uh, water, but this particular case, uh, we cannot be sure whether the, the water comes from the atmosphere of uh, the, uh, the planet or if this is uh, interaction with the star. And uh, uh, so in this part particular case, in additional observations at uh, shorter wavelengths are needed to really uh, 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 nail down the, the results and uh, to, see, to say, say whether uh, the water is uh, present in the atmosphere of the, the planet. One of the most interesting systems we have detected is a Chappis one because it has a collection of rocky planets around uh, this uh, uh, red dwarf. And uh, several of the planets uh, have been, are going to be observed, observed or are going to uh, uh, already have been observed uh, with James Webb. And the, in the particular case of the B that is the closest, and you can see the comparison with the solar system, uh, the data has already been published and results uh, are here. Uh, using the, the, um, 
uh, secondary transit uh, when the planet goes uh, behind the, the star. So we can compare the flux uh, just before and after with uh, the this small uh, dip when the planet is uh, hidden, hidden. And uh, this information has been crucial to uh, the, uh, determine, to establish what is the surface temperature of uh, the, the illuminated side of the planet. And uh, essentially to uh, conclude that uh, it doesn't have an atmosphere. It's uh, hotter than expected and uh, uh, the planet, the, the atmosphere of the planet can be ruled out with a significance, a high significance, at least a um, atmosphere that is uh, relevant. So now I'm going to move a little bit uh, from the top, the topic of exoplanets uh, is still related. Uh, it's the formation of the planetary system itself. And uh, the, the planets form from a disk that is uh, around uh, the planetary system. And uh, we can observe these this, uh, disks with a different instrumentation on more of James Webb. And now these uh, observations are, are telling us that there is a, a, a very rich uh, chemistry going on and, and a lot of uh, 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 different molecules uh, that are going to be used in the building process of uh, planetesimals that eventually will form the planets. And uh, one very interesting result is uh, uh, the analysis of this uh, Titari star. This is a very young star, like uh, 3 million years uh, old. Uh, 2000 uh, uh, Kelvin uh, is a, a, a small object, actually a low mass object. And we can compare uh, the Spitzer data that was taken uh, a few years ago with the actual James Webb. Actually, this comparison is not uh, uh, the, the by, by eye in this uh, plot is not uh, good enough because the resolution of, resolution of the James Webb is uh, much better than the, your screen now is, is, uh, showing you. And in fact, if we go into the details, we are able to see a lot of uh, uh, molecules and the, the most important results of these observations is the detection of uh, benzene and uh, uh, the possibility, even if uh, the detection of uh, isotopologs in the case of uh, 13C, uh, uh, 12C, uh, H2. But in the case, uh, now we are having a look uh, at a very uh, interesting chemistry that is going on in uh, different areas of the disk because different molecules at, uh, and different wavelengths uh, give access to different parts uh, of the disk. And uh, 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 I think that this is, uh, again, a, a, a very important step toward, uh, towards understanding uh, in detail for the formation of uh, planetary systems. Uh, oh, sorry. And uh, just to, 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 to show you the richness of uh, features that uh, the JS web, in this particular case, the MIRI uh, spectrum uh, gives, uh, you can see here the comparison of the real data with uh, the models. And uh, models should be uh, improved a little bit to be able to uh, match completely. But in any case, uh, uh, it's uh, quite amazing the, the, the richness and uh, the amount of details that now we can have a look and we have access to using the, the instrumentation. And uh, this information gives us uh, this structure in detail. We can we can now have a narrative about how the, the this uh, rich uh, carbon chemistry is happening and where it's happening. So we can reconstruct uh, uh, the the um, this uh, chemistry and uh, as I said, uh, have a detailed look at how uh, the grains are formed and evolved in time. 
Another object that is a little bit more massive is a, a GW a loop and it's a warmer also. And you remember, just I'm going back to show you the spectrum, the shape of the spectrum, uh, the shape of the spectrum taken with Miri. So we have a, a diversity of uh, shapes uh, for the fluxes. And again, we see different molecules and you can see the details here, the, the amount, the, these forests of lines and, uh, and the, the richness that we can detect using this uh, data. And the comparison with different models and inventory, inventory of lines that we can now detect. And again, we have the possibility of detecting the different isotopologues. And these isotopologues uh, are very important also because they, they, they tell us when I mean, we compare the ratio between uh, carbon 12 and carbon, carbon 13, uh, for instance, it tells us a, a nice story about where. Uh, planetary formation is happening and how it's happening. In any case, uh, uh, just to show things that are coming uh, during the next uh, few months, uh, many of these observations have been already taken, and I'm going to take uh, to talk only about the MIRI GTO team. I'm a member of it. There is a collection, a collection of uh, planets and brown dwarfs that uh, we are analyzing. And uh, a uh, significant number of disks at, around different type of stars and brown dwarfs. And I think that this information, in, 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 when we put things in context and also with other observations that are being taken by other, other teams are going to, but well, already are now, changing our view, our understanding of uh, the properties of planets and how they form and evolve. So many, res many new results uh, will come. Uh, so thank you very much for being there. And I hope that in one year, I will give you another talk with the more amazing results. And I'm, I'm happy to take any questions.